Well, good morning. I want to give each of you a very warm welcome here this morning as we gather together in our homes to gather around and worship the Lord. I also want to give a, a warm welcome to the people of Cookstown, Elam. I'm informed that they are tuning in and, and joining with us, so you are very welcome this morning. And we trust that each of you will hear from God. This morning, one of our elders, Brian McAdam, is going to be sharing from God's Word. So we're looking forward to hearing what but the Lord is putting Brian's heart for us this morning. So we look forward to that. As you know, last week I started a series on Ephesians 6, looking at the armour of God. And God willing, we're going to pick that up again in the following week. We're going to be looking at the breastplate of righteousness. So I pray that you would just prepare your hearts for that. You know, the church is, is not called to sit tight and to wait on Christ's return. She is called into service. She's called into battle. You know, in a time of peace, soldiers have no need for the armour. They have no need to put on the, that to protect them in the battlefield. They get to relax, they get to take it easy, they get to dress like civilians, to act like civilians. And you know, there are many churches today that they're living like civilians, they're living in times of peace. They're not dressed and they're not ready for war. So I just want to remind you that until we're called home, or Christ returns, we are called to be active in service. A preacher once said that there is work to be done and there are souls to be won. And that is still true for us as a church in these days. You know, today God is calling uh, the Jews back to Jerusalem, as many of you will know. But I also believe that, that God is calling all the Christians, all the soldiers, those who are wounded, those who are absent without leave. He's calling them all back to their local churches, back into the battlefield. And if that's you this morning, you've been maybe out of service, out of church for a long time. God's been calling you back. It's time. It's time that we prepare our hearts to, to put on the armour of God and get back into the battlefield. I just want to encourage you with one verse this morning as we prepare our hearts to come around the, the, the word and around the song. It's from 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. Let me just read it for you. And I thank Jesus Christ our Lord who has strengthened me that he's considered me faithful and appointed me to service. And what we see here is not only is a church called into service but she is considered to be worthy and faithful to serve Christ. You know, God, he looks on to those whom he has called and he says, I have considered you worthy, I have considered you faithful, and I have considered you able to stand with me in battle. And he says, I haven't just appointed you, but I will give you all that you need to serve me. I will give you the strength and the anointing that you need in the front line. So what an encouragement and what we have to look forward in Christ. But before we go any further, just let me pray for you as we prepare our hearts to come around the place of worship. So Father, we thank you for your word this morning of, of Lord, how you have called your church, you've equipped your church, you've given us strength to, Lord, to stand on the front line. And Father, I pray for each believer this morning that they will know firsthand that strength from God. They will know again that fresh call into the front line. And that, Father, you would take us in these days, and Lord, you would use us for your glory. Father, we pray for the song. We, we pray for Brian as he would come with the word. Lord, would you take it all and would you season it with the blessed Holy Spirit. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, good morning. Thank you for uh, tuning tuning our way this morning and joining with us uh, as we as we celebrate together. Um, I'm glad to be here to bring uh, some some scripture here this morning. So, um, if you'd just like to turn with me to John 14, um, the Gospel of John, I'll just read the first six verses of chapter 14. And the words of Jesus: Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where you go, where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, at these times, um, it would be hard to imagine. It's hard to under, underestimate, actually, the, the importance of a home. Um, it's nearly coming on to months now where we, where we were faced with the possibility of, of a lockdown of some sort. And at, those, at that time, it was hard to, um, hard to forget what it would be like for someone with no home. And uh, for many people, you know, this lockdown has been, it's been a break. It's been a, a, maybe a holiday in, in many ways. And people who got a chance maybe to spend time with their children. But for many who lived in situations that were less than ideal, it was a, a situation maybe where they were um, forced together with people, uh, maybe living in an emergency accommodation, maybe with no home at all. And I just want you to know that God... Uh, understand your situation. He, he cares. Your, he cares about your situation. If you're if you're listening this morning, if you're watching in, and that's you. If you're in a situation where uh, things are difficult at home, I just want you to know that God really does care. And you know you're in good company because when Jesus was on this earth, it says in Luke nine and fifty eight, he said that foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And you know, out of this, um, I hope that um, those who, those of us who have homes to go to and are, who know the blessing of God, that thankfulness will arise in our hearts. <clears throat> because everything we have comes from his hand. Isn't that right? Everything we have comes from him. And you know, I think it was the, um, or it was the former president of America, Theodore Roosevelt, who said that comparison is the thief of joy. And so often we compare ourselves to others. We compare our, even our homes. Our homes are never going to be perfect. But, you know, let's not be people who compare ourselves to others and rob ourselves of joy. But a Christian once said that comparison also robs God of, of thankfulness and, and praise that he deserves for all he has done for us. So let's, not, let's, let's be a people that, that really thank God for, for everything that he has done for us and everything that he has given us. Just if we go back to our text then, <clears throat> just want to give a background maybe to to what we have read and this is of course is the, the John's recording of the Last Supper and uh, G Judas has just left the room in, in, ver in chapter 13 verse 30 he says having a piece of bread he went out immediately and it was night and after this Jesus addresses these group of men and uh, we see that uh, he, he addresses them as little children he calls these men little children and we see a wonderful picture of the compassion of Jesus. You know, God sees the heart and he told them that he would be leaving them soon and how they must have felt. The, 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 you know, it, it must have been so difficult for them. And these men were not men who in the natural you would have considered children. Just look at Peter. <clears throat> and yet Christ was compassionate on them and we know that God sees the heart. But just a few chapters over in chapter 18, we, we, record, we see the record of, of what happened in, in the garden at Jesus' arrest. And Peter draws a sword and cuts off the ear of one of the guards. Had he got that sword on him in the room? We don't know. Did he get it somewhere? <clears throat> but these were men. These were, these were men that were, were not afraid in the natural and were ready and willing to do whatever it took to... Uh, to protect Jesus in the natural as much as they could, especially Peter. But yet Christ here speaks to them as little children. What comfort we can take from that, that even when we have done all we can and we, we were striving in the natural, 
And we're just about to draw that sword that Jesus still comes with that compassionate attitude towards us and would, would call us little children. What comfort we can take from that. But if we go to a reading again in, in chapter, chapter 14 and verse 1, we see that Christ could see their hearts. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. You know, if there's one thing I'd want you to take away this morning is let not your hearts be troubled. But he said, you believe in God, believe also in me. You know, many people are trusting in many different things. And there is a, a, a belief in God. Of course there is. But to hold Christ as centre is absolutely imperative. And you know, if you're watching this morning and you're not saved, I just want to say, is Christ the centre of, of where you're at? If you, if you would just put him first, if you would put him center and accept that finished work of Calvary, uh, you know, he could save you and he could do a marvelous work in your life and he would show, he would show compassion on you. No matter what, what your situation or where you've been or what you've done, if you call on him, he can save and he will show, show compassion. Perhaps you're a Christian this morning and you're seeking God for maybe direction or you're you're, uh, you're just in a, in a difficult place and you've maybe allowed your heart to be troubled. And hey, it's easy to be troubled at the moment. This, these are, this overused phrase, unprecedented times, but they really are. And let's, let's face it, like we've all um, allowed maybe trouble into our heart. But Jesus said to these men, and he could see their hearts at this time, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In the, sec in the next verse, um, Another point I just want to make, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. My father's house are many mansions. You know, with this lockdown that we're all experiencing and getting used to, and hopefully, you know, by the time um, tomorrow morning comes or Monday morning, uh, we'll be entering phase one. And I'm assuming that's a good thing. We're looking forward to a little bit of, uh, a, little bit of a release as such. But at the beginning of this lockdown, there was an awful lot of preparation went in in most homes and I'm sure there was there wasn't many people who didn't make some kind of preparation hardware stores were almost completely um, sold out of paint and fence paint was you, you couldn't get it and um, people were preparing preparing their homes and whether it was a sense of uh, um, the, the people knew that they were going to be stuck at home for a, a prolonged period of time I know initially I thought oh two weeks that's that's it's going to be at least two weeks and here we are several weeks on but there was a lot of preparation and uh, not to mention um, the ladies who, who went to the hairdressers in their droves to get their hair done one last time. And we all know of no blow drying will last seven weeks. But um, whatever it was um, for people to want to prepare their homes, there was something, that, some, something about this lockdown conjured up in an awful lot of people a desire to have things in order. And you know, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And we see here a wonderful work of grace that while that all the while in eternity, God himself is preparing something for us. He's preparing a place and another life for us. You know, if that doesn't excite us, I, I don't know what will. The thought of what lies before us. You know, Revelation 21 describes a city and it gives the dimensions of it and it's, it gives the dimensions as a cube. And that... I'm told that that symbolizes perfection. And what a wonderful place that'll be. There'll be no sun, there'll be no day or night. God's light will light up that city and we will enjoy close fellowship. You know, at the moment, probably one place that you prefer not to be living, and we thank God for, for a reasonable rural setting that we live in. And at least we can, you know, we can um, social distance with some ease. But probably nobody at the minute would really want to be living in a, in a very tight-knit city. But here we see, this is where we're going to end up. We're going to end up in the city of God, this perfect place where there's no sin or sickness or separation. And we're going to enjoy fellowship once again with, with each other, close fellowship for all eternity and with him in this, in this wonderful city. And you know, what do we do with that? When you think about that, when you think about, you know, what God is preparing for us, it's, it's hard to imagine. And read chapter, read, read Revelation 21, it's hard to take it in. But you know, there is another thing that God has prepared for us. <clears throat> and I think this is what God would want to say to us this morning. If you go to Ephesians 2, uh, Ephesians 2, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, 
which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And you know, what are these good works? What, what are these good works? So God has prepared, he's prepared a place and he's preparing a place for us. But in the meantime, in his, in his, in his wonder and how he does it, he's God, isn't he? He's preparing good works. He has prepared good works that we should walk in them. So he's so full of grace. He's preparing heaven for us, but yet he's preparing us here for heaven. And those good works could be so many things. God could be speaking to you this morning and he could, he could be prompting you just to, to step out for him into something big. Or he could be prompting you just to, to finally give up that spirit of jealousy or maybe reach that hand of, of forgiveness or, or whatever it would be. And I know in, in my own experience many years ago, I was as a young Christian, um, I was seeking God for, really seeking God for direction uh, in my life. And uh, God took me to Hebrews 10, I always remember, Hebrews 10, 36. And, it say, and he, he showed me so clearly, it was in my daily reading notes, and he spoke and he said, For ye have need of patience, for after ye have done the will of God, ye shall receive the promise. And that was what I needed at the time. I didn't need direction um, into some new thing or new area in my life. Or new, some new area of service. I needed patience. And God in his grace has prepared all these things for us. He's sanctifying us. And he's, 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 he's going to justify us when, we, when we're presented before God. And we just praise him for that. If we, if we go on down then. Um, he says in verse 3. I will, if I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive it to myself. That where I am there you may be also. His return, if I go, and he will return. You know, there's, um, it's recorded in 1 Thessalonians, actually, that the Lord himself will descend with a shout, and, and those that are, that are in Christ will go and be with him. What a thought, church, what a thought that we are going to be with him. He will return. You know, there's, there's a very old prayer, uh, and it's prayed probably in most denominations across the globe, and uh, a very, very common one. And it's called the Nicene Creed. And in that, there's a few lines. And people, people say it all the time, but I don't think they take it in. They say, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. And um, he is preparing for our return, his return. Lastly, just to conclude. Verse 6. He says, I am the way. The truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Salvation is by Christ alone. Uh, by him alone we are kept. By him alone we will, we, we will be presented before God. So do not let your heart be troubled. Um, I believe God is calling us afresh this morning um, as Christians to align all our plans. Even in these days. Because we're planning an exit aren't we? We're planning uh, what phase one is going to look like. What phase two and three and whatever else. I believe God really wants us to really realign our plans, all our hopes, all our dreams, our ambitions, everything. All the things that have really been put on hold. I believe God really wants us to put them all in line with him. And do not let your hearts be troubled. You know, if we were, um, if we were in church this morning, um, like, we, like we normally would be, uh, we'd be probably gathering around to, to break bread together and we'd be remembering um, Christ's death on the cross. And you know, I just want to, I, I couldn't finish this video without uh, reminding ourselves again about the finished work of Calvary, of Christ dying on that cross, giving it all, giving his whole life, pouring out his life blood, his, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God on that cross, purchasing our salvation, purchasing these promises, purchasing the very preparations in heaven that he's making now purchasing these good works that he prepared beforehand you know this pre preparation is is by grace it's the preparation of grace isn't it and uh, we have a um a little song that we sing at home it's a well-known uh, children's course and just it's on verse six and it's uh, it's i am the way the truth and the life uh, that's what jesus said without the way there is no going i always get these words mixed up actually so I've written them down. Without the way, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. And without the life, there is no growing. I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
That's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus said. If you accepted him as saviour, uh, he'll come in and he'll, he'll bless you and he'll give you a home in heaven. He'll prepare a place for you as well. And he has good works prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. Uh, and I really encourage Christian to really grow in God, really seek to grow in God uh, and he will bless you. Um, in, in the days that lay ahead. The girls are going to, and the ladies are going to lead us in worship now. I really do thank you for, for tuning in and I pray you will be blessed. Amen. Good morning and welcome to your Sunday online service. We're um, delighted to be with you here again. I just want to invite you just to come and worship with us this morning. I know it's strange um, worshiping along with us um, on your screen, but can I just encourage you just to try and um, try and envisage that you're in church and if you want to close your eyes um, just to worship um, God and just to sing with us, um, we're going to sing, there is strength within the sorrow, there is beauty in our tears, you meet us in our mourning with a love that casts out fear, your plans are still to prosper, you have not forgotten us, isn't that a wonderful promise? that he has not forgotten us, that he has a plan and a future for us. So can you join with us and sing with us as we worship God this morning? 